The college basketball season is only a couple weeks away, so to preview the 2024-2025 season, I want to talk about eight schools I'm most interested to watch this season. Not necessarily the eight best schools, but eight interesting schools. I'm limiting myself to four teams ranked in the preseason AP Top 25, and then only two teams ranked 11 through 25, and then two unranked teams. A few more key notes at the top is I'm very, very, very excited to watch South Carolina. I'm going to watch more South Carolina than any other school this season, but there's just not as many questions. The staff rules, the, the players rule, they went undefeated last season. They brought back pretty much the same core, lost Camilo Cardozo, and that's pretty much it. So there's not as many questions with South Carolina. And also with how I watch games, I tend to watch teams that have prospects just because that's my focus as far as covering college basketball and what I look for. So a team like Iowa State is not one that I'm as interested to watch. So I won't be talking about those type of teams in this video. But to start with, the first team will go in order of who's ranked highest in the AP Top 25 to get down to our two unranked teams I want to talk about today. And the first of which is UConn. For UConn, last season, 33-6, and 18-0 in the Big East. They made the Final Four, led by Paige Beckers, the best player in college basketball. This team also has KK Arnold, AZ Fudd, Sarah Strong, and Jana L. Alfie. For the key bench, Caitlin Chen, transfer from Princeton, super experienced college player, as well as Ashlyn Shade, the sophomore, and then Ice Brady. It's possible either Shade or Chen start with Fudd missing time to start the season. But to start at the top with Paige Beckers, Paige is way too good for college basketball at this point. Like I said, the best player in college basketball. And I'm interested to see how KK Arnold improves offensively this season. For KK, you know the defense. She's excellent defensively. On ball, off ball. Can she make threes more consistently? Can she show more creation ability? That's one question for me this season. Also, I'm super interested if Jana could come in and be a real-time interior presence. This is a different type of center than UConn's had in the past. They tended to have these scheme-versatile, switching bigs like Aaliyah Edwards, Olivia nelson Adota, etc., etc. And for Jana, she's much more of the drop big that's going to defend the paint, not really switchable whatsoever. So I would be interested to see... Will they go small ball with Sarah Strong at the five? Strong is, in my opinion, the best prospect from this past high school class in terms of like who's going to be the best pro prospect. They haven't played a college game, but that's just my take before the season. For Strong, she's six foot two. I wouldn't even call her like a post player. She can really pass. Like the driving pops, the shooting pops, the range she has from deep. Having Strong as this player you can go five out with, Paige can also clean up on the back end as a weak side rim protector. I'm interested to see what UConn does. They're going to be trusting Jana a lot though, just because you need that big that can change pace and more traditional in terms of like rim protection. The other really question for me is as far as like what Aubrey Griffin can provide. You don't see her on the graphic here just because I couldn't fit every name and I wanted to include a big and Ice Brady. But for Griffin... She's legitimately one of my favorite defensive players to watch ever. How she defends off the ball, it's a blast to watch. But the injuries have been such a consistent concern with Griffin. But this UConn team is fun. There's a lot of questions as far as like who plays the most minutes, what's the starting lineup like around Paige. We'll see how it goes, but UConn is for sure a title contender entering this season. A team I would probably have number two in my preseason rankings, is USC. They're led by Juju Watkins, arguably the best player in college basketball. She's probably second to Paige, but this team has Juju Watkins at the two, TVO at the one, transfer from Oregon State, senior. They also have Kiki Iriofen, pretty much the consensus number two prospect in this year's draft. Also, Kennedy Smith, five-star wing forward, and then Rhea Marshall, one of the best rim protectors in college basketball. On their bench, they're led by two freshmen in Kaylee Heckle and Avery Howell, two five-star recruits. Just to start with the obvious, I'm so excited to watch Juju Watkins 
Kiki Iriofen, two player actions. My questions for these two players is, can Juju up her efficiency by not having to carry this enormous offensive load every single night? She now has a real point guard in TVO to run things through. They also have Kiki Iriofen, who is one of the five best players in college basketball. So to have those two players should leave some pressure on her offensively and defensively. My other question is, can Kiki Iriofen start taking threes? For USC, Lindsey Gottlieb, the fourth-year head coach, she has a pro-style system as far as like her player development approach. So I'm interested to see if she can have Kiki taking some pick-and-pop threes in two-player actions with Juju. And then also just playing alongside Rhea Marshall. Rhea Marshall is not the floor spacer that Cameron Brink was. So Iriofen needs to be a shooter or at the very least continue developing as a mid-range scorer for this duo in the front court to really live up to their highest ceiling this season. For sure, a contender to win a national championship. Kennedy Smith is their best freshman in my opinion. I was very impressed by her defense on the perimeter being able to switch, but also her driving. And then also the shooting, I think she's going to shoot. I saw some of that at Hoop Summit last year that made me pretty excited to watch her. Next, UCLA number 5 team in the preseason. This team is so talented from having Kiki Rice, London Jones, Gabrielle Jaquez, as well as Janiah Barker, and Lauren Betts. And then on the bench, they have Tamia Gardner, who was a key piece to Oregon State's Elite 8 appearance last season. They also have Charlize Ledger-Walker, who is someone I would consider to be like a top 15 prospect in the 2025 draft. Ledger Walker won't be back until January-ish because she tore her ACL last season at Washington State. This team is good. My major question for them is they have the talent. This is the most talented team Corey Close has had in a while. Can she finally get over the hump? Close is one of the best coaches as far as like player development, having a good culture, and stealing confidence into players. But her in-game adjustments have been average at best. It's a main reason why this team has never got over the hump. This season, there's no excuses there. My other question is, can Janiah Barker, the transfer from Texas A&M, can she take the superstar leap? Can this be the year that Janiah Barker takes the leap from being an interesting prospect with high upside to actually putting that upside into consistent production night in and night out. For Barker, there's a chance she is the best player on this UCLA team by January. It's also possible she's the fourth best player and she's coming off the bench. It's possible Tamia Gardner plays better than Janiah Barker and Barker is on the bench. It could go either way. The, the floor is a lot lower with Barker, but the ceiling is so, so high to where she could be an All-American if everything goes right for this team. And if Janiah Barker is an All-American, this team is a contender for a national championship. So I'm super fascinated by UCLA. Kiki Rice has continued to improve. Hopefully she is in store for a big junior season. To move to LSU, number seven in the preseason top 25, this is Flage Johnson's team. My first question is, can Flage take the leap from awesome star player, like for sure like a star, to this is a first team All-American caliber player? Can she take more pull-up threes? Can she continue improving as a passer? Can she continue and just continue building on her finishing, improve in that area? Can she continue to be this awesome mid-range creator? Flage Johnson could be in that contention for an All-American first team spot this season with LSU. Also have Michaela Williams, who's one of the most gifted scorers in college basketball. Anissa Morrow as well. Her defense, her rebounding, her energy. Cheyenne Day Wilson at LSU, their, their point guard transfer from Miami. Shy is so fun just because she can make pull-up threes at an insane rate. I do have questions if the off-ball shooting can be any valuable because that's her biggest concern there. And then also, I don't know if she's ideally the lead playmaker for a title contender. So hopefully, Flage can leave some of that pressure off of her. They also have last year Poa, Caitlin Gilbert, the transfer from Arizona, and Samaya Smith, who's coming back from a torn ACL. Smith could start. I would probably start Smith and go smaller just because I think Smith is better 
than Del Rosario. I just don't think Del Rosario's movement skills are good enough just because I think she's kind of slow. It kind of like slows down your offense with having Flage, who plays so well in transition, Morrow, who plays well in transition, Michaela Williams as this outlet threat that can make threes in transition. Anyways, to move to the next team, that is the Duke Blue Devils. For Duke, they have the best kept secret in college basketball, and that is Alucia Conowa, the rising sophomore. Okonowa could take a massive leap. She could be one of the 20 best players in college basketball this season. Just because Okonowa is an awesome athlete, she is an explosive driver, she is a versatile defender. There's not many better defenders in college basketball than Alucia Okonowa. She can also shoot a little bit. That's the swing skill with her. Can she shoot? Because Duke's shooting has been the biggest concern, basically for the last decade, if I'm being real. They have so many players that are so similar but they're at different positions. Like, it's a bunch of players that are similar archetypes, just like fun athletes that can't shoot or are questionable shooters, i.e. Lucia Conowa, Tana Mayer, Jaden Donovan, Toby Fournier. And they also don't have much size. They were banking on Ariana Robertson, the five-star center, being their starting five this season. She tore her ACL, I believe it was, in the preseason. So now they're probably going to start Delaney Thomas at the five, or go with like Toby Fournier, Jaden Donovan at the five, and then just dig in the post, keep helping, play a, a high pressure defense where you you know you press, you know what Duke does, they press, you trap, you just put a ton of pressure on the opposing offense. So there's a bunch of questions here as far as like does Toby start, does Jaden start, how does that work as far as their floor spacing? Can Tana Mayer take a leap offensively this season as far as like her scoring? The passing's fun. The floaters can be fun, but we'll see what Duke can do. Next for Ohio State. Ohio State is such an interesting team for me. They have Jelani Cambridge, who might not start. It could be her or Madison Green. The senior, the super senior, not really sure. She's been in college basketball for a minute. But my main question here is, can Jelani be the best freshman in college basketball? I think having Ohio State as the preseason number 14 team is kind of rich. For my liking, I would probably have them closer to 20 than 10, but they do have talent with Jelani, with Chance Gray, with Cody McMahon, Taylor Theory, Asia Petty. Asia Petty was super good at Kentucky, Taylor Theory, Cody McMahon. The question here is, do they have enough shooting? Because Cody can't shoot, Taylor Theory can't shoot, Asia Petty can't shoot. Can Jelani be like their only shooter with Chance Gray? That's putting a lot of pressure on a freshman and then Chance Gray, who's been so inefficient in her college career. Next, for the first of two unranked teams in the preseason, TCU. This TCU roster has such a high ceiling, but the floor is pretty low. And my first question for them is, can Haley Van Lith have a bounce-back season? It was rough at times at LSU. Can this role with TCU be a better spot for her to continue developing be a better point guard? Like, can she actually be a point guard? I thought at LSU, a lot of their struggles were because Haley Van Lith is just not a point guard. She'll probably play the the one this season. We'll see how that goes. But my favorite aspect of this TCU team is the defense. But just to be clear, the defense on the wing, and as far as, like, the players defending on the wing outside of Haley Van Lith and Madison Connor. For Connor, she's an awesome, there's not many better movement shooters in college basketball, but the defense is very bad. But having Donovan Hunter, who can really defend, Maddie Shearer, who can really defend, Agnes, who can really defend, having all of those players around Haley Van Lith and Madison Connor is going to be fun. They also have Taylor Bigby, who played at USC, fun defender as well. I'm interested to see what Maddie Shearer does this season. She may start, she may come off the bench. Shear, who transfers from Kentucky, I wish she had scoring confidence because the connective passing is so there, the defense is so fun, the floor spacing is valuable, the shot looks good. Her main problem is like, can she actually finish? She's never been a good finisher. Can she be confident as a scorer? She turns down so many easy chances to score just because of the confidence. Donovan Hunter is similar to me in terms of like, not the most confident scorer, but can really defend, hoping a more consistent season from her offensively. But this team could be fun. We'll see what happens. They have Sedona Prince as well. 
I don't really like Sedona Prince, to be clear, for reasons that don't need to be stated, but she is a good college player. She is a good college post player who's been in college for like a decade at this point. Not really a decade, but it's felt like a decade. She's been in college forever. Then for Vanderbilt, the final team we'll talk about today. This is the first time I've entered a season excited to watch any Vanderbilt basketball team, like ever. They had their best season in 2023-2024 since 2009. They made the tournament 23-10 and record. They were 9-7 in the SEC. Shea Ralph is one of the best coaches in college basketball. To do this at Vanderbilt, to recruit, is also what I want to talk about here. They had their best recruit signed in this past high school class. Michaela Blakes was a top 10 recruit in the 2024 recruiting class. I don't know too much about Blakes just yet. I haven't watched too much of her, to be clear, but I'm very intrigued by her long-term prospects as a six-foot guard. Like, having a guard, I don't, don't think she's a true one, but having a guard that is six foot, having good size, can play on the wing. She could be a sneaky f- national freshman of the year candidate. Will it happen? Maybe, maybe not. We'll see there. They also have Leilani Kapanis, who comes in from Penn State. She is an awesome defender, can really defend, is an awesome driver from the wing, from the slot, does so much there. Pierre was one of the best freshmen in the conference last year. Moore can really shoot. Same with Justine Passat. We'll see what happens with Vanderbilt. Also, I obviously could have talked about Texas, Notre Dame, NC State, a couple other teams I'm super excited to watch. Even like Baylor, I'm interested. Louisville as well. Kentucky with Georgia Amor. Just to name a few of teams I'm excited to watch outside of that group. So anyways, let me know in the comments below what you agree and disagree with from what I talked about today between these eight schools. Who is your pick for the national championship this season? Let me know in the comments below. Subscribe, comment, like, all those things for the algorithm, and I'll see y'all next time.